hello there and welcome back to another review so today we're going to be looking at one of my all-time uh, favorite Yun Wu Ping uh, movies and that is the Buddhist fist I'd even go as far to say it's probably one of his most forgotten about as well um, undervalued often overlooked but it's a uh, it's an incredible incredible kung, old school kung fu movie and I've absolutely loved it for ages and it's probably high on my it's hard to pick a favorite Yun Wu Ping vehicle because by and large they're all absolutely brilliant and amazing uh, but Buddhist fist this definitely sits very, very high uh, on the list of my favourite uh, Wu Ping. Put up there with Miracle Fighters um, as in terms of one of my favourites. So forget your Drunken Masters, put them aside, forget your Magnificent Butchers, and today we're going to be looking at the Buddhist Fist uh, made in 1980. This was another one of them films that I did have on VHS back in the day, one of the old school uh, Kung Fu movies for the Made in Hong Kong label back in the 90s. Um, I think this film was the, the one uh, that they did, you Wu Ping did, I think it was made after Magnificent Butcher, um, but before Dreadnought, so it's the film that was sort of made uh, in between them two movies. We have Yun Chun Yi here as our lead, who is always uh, in most of his brothers Yun Wu Ping's movies. Was he was the lead in Dance of the Drunken Mantis? He was the police chief in Iron Monkey. He was the killer in Dreadnought. Been in loads and loads of movies. Um, what I love about this movie, just like every Wu Ping film, is just how inventive the choreography is, and they're really really going at it here the young clan they're really showing off what they can do and they're really get, like, getting into their stride in terms of the choreography and how inventive it is and the film is pretty much like i said the young clan doing their thing and really getting really getting that i mean they were off anyway with flight from snake and the eagle shadow but here it's really everything seems to be cranked up a notch things are getting a little more crazy a little bit more inventive um it's just it's just um just insane stuff but, but for whatever reason, though, but there's something special about this movie. There's something special about it. I don't know what it is. I can't pinpoint what it is. I can't tell you what it is. But there's just something that I don't know whatever it is that just makes this film very, very special. Um, um, you know, we get it all here. We have sleeping kung fu fighting. We have like chess balls kung fu we have fighting with fire we have yin su tin we have vampire hunchback kung fu we have revenge comedy it's all in there it's all in there in this film and like i said everything's just thrown in and not only that but it all works together uh, really well and beautifully really really amazing film um what makes this film so good is that there was no safety net either as such with this one. There was no Jackie Chan as your lead, no Sammo Hung. This wasn't a sequel to like a previous movie like Dance of the Drunken Mantis was sort of like a spin-off uh, sort of drunken ma master. No Yun Bu like with Dreadnought. This is very much the Yun clan doing their thing and showing what they can do. And it is really um, a five-star kung fu movie. Make no mistake about that. This is a five-star uh, kung fu movie and one of my all-time favourites. And if you have uh, known or seen The Buddhist Fist, be sure to leave a comment below. Uh, it'd be great to hear from other fans of this movie. And as far as I know, everyone I'm aware of that has seen this movie absolutely loves it. A lot of people, when I say it's forgotten about, they they usually just go to the obvious ones, like I mentioned, you know, the Magnificent Butchers, the Snake and the Eagle Shadows, the Drunken Masters. But you've, if you want a really um, like great old-school five-star Yun Wu Ping uh, kung fu movie, then you've got to got it you must check out buddhist fist as i say this film just has it all choreography is just insane and out of this world along with yun shun yi we have soi su ming here peter chan and the ever dependable lee hoi sang the story though does trip over itself a little bit and a few minor plot holes here and there um it does hold through the movie and like about these two that have been friends since young kids and because one of them has a moment of weakness it ends up basically impacting everything they had what is also great about this is the balance is right uh, you never once feel okay a fight's happened just because the story and fights go hand in hand so well um it's not just fight 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 but at the same time it's not like you go ages without a fight but the balance is really really perfect Perfect. And it's really orchestrated well by Yun Wu Ping. Um, and as I say, the balance is just spot on. Um, like with a lot of Yun Clan's fights, especially in the early movies, the fighting borders on dancing in a way. Like Jackie Chan always said about the rhythm of fight scenes, Yun Wu Ping's choreography sometimes, it is sometimes like a dance. Um, you know, the uh, Yun Wu, the absolutely amazing, amazing, um, you know, experts are doing that on camera. 
Um, but the fights in this are so well done and put together that it's really one of the best examples, I think, to me anyway, to me, of that late 70s, sort of early 80s uh, kung fu movies. And, um, you know, when you're in the hands of the, like the Yun clan, you know that very little can go wrong. Um, so you've just got to check this out. Extremely underrated. Um, I think it's... It's, I, I don't know what it is, but it's always just, to my knowledge anyway, it seems like it's always overlooked, this film. It seems like it's always overlooked. Not a lot of people know about it. Not a lot of people have heard about it. But people that have seen it absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. And if you haven't seen this little gem or never heard of it, please go and watch it and let me know what you think. So we have these two boys, one who is a monk, who have been like friends since childhood. We then cut to them grown up practicing Kung Fu together. Yun Chun Yi's character, Ah Shang, has to go and work in the city and he gives Su Ming, the monk, a pendant like a keepsake, like sort of trying to remember their bond and where they come from and just how much they mean to each other. Then we have the mysterious Mr. Chen or uh, Chen or Champ speaking to this prostitute and it's all sort of shot from behind so we have no idea who, who he really is who has got a monk drunk and he has slept with this prostitute and Mr. Chen wants the Jade Buddha from the temple as a foreigner, foreigner is willing to pay a hefty sum for it um, he basically kills her and wants to blackmail the monk and get him involved with the murder and to get the Jade Buddha to him basically it's just this monk's got drunk he slept with this prostitute this guy's right you know, you've gone against your vows and whatever. You, I want that Jay Buddha because I can get a nice sum for it. I'm going to get you to steal it for me. That's sort of the setup for the movie. As I say, the plot does trip over itself a little bit here and there. Um, there's a little bit when you really think about it and look at it, it's like that doesn't make too much sense. But we'll go, I'll address that sort of as we go along through the review. Um, so we hit, like I say, he wants the Jade Buddha. The monk, of, the monk of, of course, is Su Ming, goes full on ninja uh, to steal the Jade Buddha, um, to steal it, um, you know, all in black. I swear this is like the... When they do this, when he's trying to... He's dressed like a sort of a ninja and he's sort of sneaking into the temple um, to sort of um, get the Jade Buddha. I swear it's like the same set from Spiritual Kung Fu. It looks exactly like the same set. It's... Um, I mean, Spiritual Kung Fu was done I think, a couple of years earlier, maybe even a year earlier. But um, it just looks exactly the same. It really does look exactly the same. Um, with, like I said, with Jackie Chan, looks very. If not, if, if not the set, it looks very, very, very similar. Uh, watch out for Simon Yun here, Yun Su Chin, uh, as like the lazy sleeping guard. Uh, so the monk flees after being beat. We then cut to our Shang, who has got a job working in the barbers. We also meet his like sidekick, played by Peter Chan. We have comedy moments, of course, like with him shaving this guy's mustache off when he didn't even want to, uh, but only one side of it. You will recognise this guy from who's in the chair from sort of Young Master. So he was the sort of police chief. And that when Jackie Chan fights uh, the group uh, with the swords in Young Master. Uh, I mean, he gets a real tough deal in this movie, though. I mean, he gets his mustache shaved off, which he didn't want. Then after he goes mad, they beat him up. So, he did, you know, <laughs> I don't think that uh, Barbers would probably be getting a five-star rating. He didn't even ask for that to be shaved, but he was a sort of asleep in the chair. And uh, you know, he sort of mistakes that he wanted his mustache shaven. I mean, the guy has every right to be angry, to be fair. They, and they, to be fair, though, they do get sacked, him and Peter Chan. Uh, they go to our Shane's godfather, who is sort of confronted by the monk and his accomplice after spotting them earlier, and we have no idea where he has gone, basically. Um, he gets... Uh, the monk and uh, the guy from earlier, they sort of confront him. Um, so he, we have no idea where he's gone. Our Shane goes to the police. We have the chief dealing with this pair or arguing about a bull raping a cow, uh, which they uh, do actually, I think they rule in the bull's favour. <laughs> it's like he said, the police chief's having to like, settle a dispute between this cow and this bull, uh, you know. Um, we meet Lee Hoi Sang as Boss Chen, and Lee Hoi Sang has a full head of hair in this movie. Um, he hasn't he hasn't got his usual bald look going on. He's got, he's actually got a full full head of hair, which does make a change. Um, like you remember, like in uh, Heroes of the East as well, when Gordon Liu's got a full head of hair. When you when there's a like a kung fu guy who's usually always bald uh, in these movies, when they suddenly have hair, it's like oh damn! Like I say, like uh, Gordon Liu in Heroes of the East. Look out for uh, Yun Chun Yang here is the leader of this group of thugs in the market. Um, usually, usual, usual thing, just causing trouble and don't want to pay for food, you know, as always. Well, as I say, the markets in Kung Fu movies don't ever go to the market because there's always going to be a fight, 
some thugs start him wanting protection money, whatever it be, or if somebody take buying like wanting something that they're not going to pay for, no matter what it is. So, or like I said, don't want to pay for food, don't want to pay for something they've just had, whatever it may be. So two men comes to the salesman, salesman aid, and him and our Chang are sort of reunited. Uh, look out for Fan Mei Shang here too, playing Kung Fu Chess with the Monk's Master. He was the guy who was in sort of Story of Ricky. He was also in, uh, he was like sort of the old beggar role in Magnificent Butcher. Teacher tells them about about returning to Buddha, which is using your own weight against the enemy, which we see a lot of in the barnstorming final fight, where they're so, you're sort of using your own weight uh, against your opponent. And when I say the choreography is really inventive in this movie, it really is. It's it's crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, a mask killer comes to take out Ah Shang when him and his buddy are staying at his godfather's hut. So Chen is blackmailing Su Ming and wants Ah Shang dead too, probably because he is sniffing around and not giving up to find his godfather, who we as an audience have no idea what happened to like his godfather's just disappeared we saw him he was sort of confronted earlier but he's gone so it's like a, there's a sense of mystery as well uh going on with this movie we then have a fight involving a fortune teller and i can't stress enough how fast and fluid and inventive the fight scenes are in this film uh fan may turns up and fights the fortune teller at first with his chessboard ah uh, shang is like why would someone want me dead um I mean, you would be more than entitled to ask that um, because the film, although the premise, the setup is simple, it does stumble a little bit here and there. Um, you know, the fact this guy sort of killed this monk, got drunk, slept with a prostitute. This other guy is sort of blackmailing him to get this Jay Buddha. And then that you've also got uh, Shane's godfather who's been kidnapped as well at the same time and um, so it sort of just goes along and along with us so it does stumble just little bits here and there uh, master Chen has this guy who does like he, he has this guy which is really probably one of the standout moments of the film who uh, he has this guy who does like ghost claw kung fu and and it's just the Yun clan at their most wacky and inventive here building up that sort of you know that miracle fighters vibe um i will get around to reviewing miracle fighters soon but i absolutely love uh, that movie and it's that they've got that going on here um shang, shang learns that his father knew some conspiracy basically uh, connected to the case so shang gets invited to tea with uh, lee chow mu who is going to try and poison him with his tea and this guy's like a severe he's got like a hunchback going on he's got like a hump uh as well uh which is which is uh to say it's just visual it's visually entertaining and so with the kung fu as well and his face is all white and he's basically like a corpse right is what he is he's basically like a walking corpse uh, much how, how like sort of the sickness master was uh, in Dance of the Drunken Mantis. Um, they fight with chopsticks. Then we see his kung fu, and it's very, it's very almost spooky encounters, encounters of the spooky kind in nature. It's got that sort of thing uh, going on with it, um, <coughs> but it's just entertaining. Just so so dumb, damn fun. And love, love he gets his back smashed with a hammer, and his hand comes out the, the other side at one point as well. Uh, just just funny, funny, funny. Ends with him sort of drinking his own poison. Um, see, Ming is at our Shang's at night, who, who he confronts. Um, I mean, what about the Jade Buddha at this point? Does Mr. Chen want it anymore, or do, or is he just focused on killing our Shane? Because that seems to be all he's worried about. Now, I mean, the Jade Buddha plot element has gone all out the window completely. It's like all he's concentrated on now is just like taking out our Shane. He's, he's made, that has become sort of his main uh, focus. Um, he's just focused on killing him. As we know, Si Ming, because we know he didn't take the J, he didn't get the J Buddha at the start of the movie, because uh, Yun Su Tin sort of um, sort of fought him off. So the J Buddha is not even sort of relevant at this point in the movie. He just wants to kill uh, Ah Shang. The J Buddha gets all but forgotten about it seems, but like I say, for pure solid kung fu entertainment, you can do a lot worse than this movie. Believe me. Um, you watch the moves here from Su Ming with his like rope dart and the flame on the end. I mean, it serves no purpose, but it just looks so awesome and so cool. Not to mention slightly dangerous as well. So one of the guys who intrudes on them turns out to be a cop, and he got a letter from our Shane's godfather about the J Buddha. Right, so the J Buddha does come back into the plot. Um, and he is investigating, finds out that it has gone, right? So is that making any sense? Is that making any sense? I think, you know, 
the real question is, does it really matter? You know, the cop is undercover as a bean curd salesman, but on a delivery gets ambushed by a guy with a big and small feet who is Lee Hoi Sang, and he, this guy gets murdered. Bosch Chen goes to kill An Yu, that's Peter Chan's character, who escapes, and Ah Shang has found like this basement where his godfather is sort of he's being starved and he's like sort of chained up. Um, let's say we have a whole kidnapping thing uh, going on as well. Master Chen comes in and stabs him with a spear. So Chen says he wants the Buddha from the temple. Um, so has he got it yet, or what? Um, you know, and he re reveals like his scheme to Ah Shang. Um, you know, so he still wants the Buddha this whole time, but the, for the, by and large, for most of it, he's just trying to kill Ah Shang. I don't know because he thinks he's going to get wind of his plans, but at the same time, he's he wants to kill Ah Shang, but he just wants to kidnap his godfather, who was sort of discovered what was going on uh, but again it doesn't need to be thought about too much it really doesn't uh so he reveals his scheme and whilst fighting and you arrives with the police who kill mr chen the buddhist master asks him did you give this jade like pendant when they found the intruder to the temple he says it was Si ming so at the start of the movie that the the sort of the, the buddhist master asked the, about this jade pendant and they found it there, and it was belonged to Soi Su Ming. So at his godfather's funeral, after they get a girl to wear the jade pendant, a sort of bait in order to like lure, uh, lure uh, Soi Su Ming's character out. Um, so our two former brothers fight. Real Winchcrit handwork here, and done a lot more serious in tone uh, than some of your other Yun Wu Ping work. Like this, despite all the crazy off the wall fight choreography, this is very much a serious fight. This is sort of brothers in arms going at it. Yes, you still get the crazy off the wall mad inventive. Choreography, but this is still a very serious fight, very serious in tone. Anyway, it's um, you know, sort of they need to settle this. It's that kind of fight. It's not slapsticky or anything like that. It's not like I say, sort of even light-hearted in a way. It's very much a very serious fight. We have Ming here using like sleeping Buddha technique. Their master comes in and see Ming sort of injures him accidentally. Uh, I mean, he slept with someone, and um, you know. I never asked to be a monk. Uh, I mean, I know I say this a lot, but this film really is worth watching for the M fight alone. Um, you know, he did... The, the whole idea is he's broken his vows, basically, of what he was uh, going to do. And as I say, there's a Jade Buddha involved, there's a kidnapping involved, there's murder involved, and there's chessboards involved, and there's hunchbacks involved, and it's just, as I say, just crazy. Um... But I'd say this, it's, for the end fight, it's a manic fight, and Yun Wu Ping and his crew doing some of their finest stuff. Uh, si Ming uses his own weight on Ah Shang, who kills him eventually at the end of this epic fight. But it's an amazing kung fu movie, and the plot does make sense, if not completely. Um, but as I mentioned, who cares when it's just so entertaining, and it really is an all-round... Uh, it's almost like a perfect kung fu movie in a way you don't get any training as such there's no sort of masters or the training scenes or anything like that but you still get a thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable um movie and it's all it's almost like the young clan unleashed if you know what i mean um uh, really really doing their thing um so just about really a guy trying to blackmail a monk who wants the jade buddha not sure why they kept our shang's dad alive and chained up not sure if he actually ever got the buddha why was seeming sneaking around in our shang's a lot of the time um few just niggles but it doesn't stop it from being a five-star movie and i can't stress enough just go 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 check it out because i've been singing the film's praise now uh, for nearly 20 minutes so i'm going to stop talking but thank you very much indeed for watching i hope you enjoyed the review and I'll see you again soon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory.